Okay, so here's my model that I'm going to be using for this demonstration. This is a plastic bottle and I need to calculate the required dimensions for this bottle to hold when full 500 milliliters. I've got a couple of configurations in here. This is a fluid configuration, so basically what this one is, it's where I've got a a boss extrude that I extruded and uh, checked the merge body so this is a separate body then I've got to combine where the combine is actually subtracting the bottle solid body from the boss extrude one solid body to get the the volume of the fluid then I've also got another configuration in here This configuration is called fluid, variable fluid. I basically got a cut extrude, so I'm taking my volume cut, vo volume solid body and doing a cut extrude starting from the top and cutting a uh, blind depth so I can vary the, the height of the fluid in the bottle. So here's my Excel spreadsheet that I'm going to use to control my SolidWorks model and also have the solver converge on a solution for the volume. Since I'm actually going to have a macro in here I need to make sure that I've got my developer tab turned on so that uh, I have a developer tab so I can get to my Visual Basic Editor. Also I need to go to my Trust Center and make sure I have a trusted locations folder that I've got my macro enabled spreadsheet saved in so that way then when I can open up the spreadsheet I can actually run the macro without having any security issues. Also I need to use the solver so I need to make sure my solver add-in is turned on so I go to my Add-ins, Excel add-ins, hit the go button and make sure the solver add-in is checked. So here's my spreadsheet. Cell B1 is going to use to hold the diameter dimension. B2 is going to hold the calculated volume. B3 is going to convert the calculated volume which is going to be returned in cubic meters. I want to turn, convert that over into a volume of milliliters. So I'll take the calculated value in cubic meters and multiply it times one million to get milliliters. Here's a cell that actually is going to, I'm going to use a little bit later on. This cell is actually going to change the height of the fluid in the bottle so I can then put a scale on the bottom to see how many how much volume I actually have left and here's the calculated value based on that particular height of the fluid and here's just like the the B3 cell where I'm actually taking the calculated and multiplying it times 1 million to convert from cubic meters to milliliters Go to my developer tab and click on my Visual Basic. So here's my Sheet 1 object. And the Sheet 1 object in my Worksheet Change sub. This is where I've got my macro. And basically, this sub will run whenever any cell on this worksheet uh, the value has changed in it. Uh, also want to make sure and have my references to my SolidWorks type library and my SolidWorks constant type library turned on. So here in this sub is where I'm declaring my variables. Here's where I'm actually doing something. I've got an if statement in here, so I'm checking, or I should point out that the 
this chain sub there's a, a parameter that's passed back to the sub for the cell that's actually changed or the range that's actually changed so I'm checking to make sure that this target address if it's cell B1 is changed then run this part of the code now if it's a B6 which is the second part of the the problem run this section uh, so the first thing I have to do when I got a SolidWorks macro I need to connect to my running instance to SolidWorks in this case so I do a set SW app equals get object and then specify the the name of the application which is sldworks.application then I need to connect to the active document so I'll set SW model equal SW app dot active document. Also need to connect to the model dot extension so that I can calculate the mass properties. So I set SW mod extension equal SW model dot extension. Need to connect to the dimension that I'm going to be changing. So I'll set SW dim equal SW model dot parameter. And then the parameter I'm actually passing to this method is the name of the dimension I'm changing. So in this case it's D2 at sketch 1. That's the diameter dimension. I'm going to change the value of the dimension. I can use the SWDIM dot set user value N2 and pass that method the model, the target dot value. So this is actually the value of the dimension and then I need to specify what configurations that I want to set this value in. In this case I want to do it for all configurations. And I might point out here also that this set value or set user value in to this is actually working in the document units versus normally an API SolidWorks API all your units are in meters so I don't have to worry about converting in this case. Now I'm going to edit rebuild so I'm going to rebuild the model after I change the dimension value. Here's where I'm going to calculate the mass properties. V mass props equal SW mod extent dot get mass properties. Parameters I'm passing to this one. The first one is a 1 that is in effect using the default accuracy. I'm also passing a variable in status as a long and this is actually returning the whether this it calculated the mass properties okay or not. Now I need to place that volume from these mass properties into the cell in this case cell B2 and this is actually the fourth element in the array it's a zero based array so the fourth element in the zero based array is the the volume you could look in your SolidWorks API help file and it'll tell you this which one is what uh, then this next part of the code here is where I'm actually doing the second phase of this of this demo to where I'm actually going to adjust the the volume height so if this B6 value is changed then basically do the same thing except this time change the, the D1 at cut extrude which is the cut extrude depth so this is the one that's adjusting the the volume or the the level of the fluid in the bottle and then at the end I'm passing it to the, the B7 cell So now let's run the solver. The solver is under our data tab in the ribbon toolbar. I need to start the solver. I need to specify the target cell. The target cell is the one I want to solve. It's going to be B3. I want to set its value to 500 milliliters. 
and I want to change the cell I'm going to change the, the B1 cell so this is the diameter dimension now in this case I'm going to add a couple of constants what the constants will do it will one speed up the process so I want to set that value is equal to the limits so it's going to be less than or equal to the 66 and do it again except this time it'll be greater than or equal to the 63 limit so now I've got my two constraints also this constraint will help in avoiding possibly uh, sketches blowing up on you because you made too big a changes to your dimensions in the sketch. So now when I hit my solve button it's going through there and running the thing at the current dimension or B1 value running the macro, the macro is changing the model to that particular value dimension value, calculating the mass properties returning the mass properties and then the solver is checking that to the required value if it's not within the tolerance then it will change the dimension rerun the analysis so after a few iterations it's actually found a solution I want to keep the solution in case the solution is 64.76636 millimeters for the diameter and you can see the volume is 500 milliliters so there's this dimension for the bottle for it to hold 500 milliliters now for the second part of this example I'm going to switch to the the variable fluid configuration and in this configuration I just have the a cut extrude or I've just got a sketch and I'm doing a extrude cut specifying a, a distance a blind cut so this is in effect the fluid when the when the bottle is 10 millimeter millimeters from the from the top so let's set this to 10 my macro since I changed that value it ran that second part of the if statement or the second if statement calculated the volume the volume is 495 so let's run the solver again except this time my target is going to be my B8. I want to set it to a value of maybe 200 and I want to do it by changing cell B6 my constraints I could leave those in here they're really not affecting this. It's actually constraint is B1. I'm not changing B1. So I'll just go ahead and leave them in. If I hit my solve button, there it's actually making the changes. And it's converged on a solution. So when the half is 140 millimeters from the top I've got 200 milliliters volume in the bottle hope this demonstration was beneficial to you I'm putting the files on my website www.wlmservices.net on the download page so the files will be available to you if you do have any questions, uh, you can email me at wayne at wlmservices.net. Thank you for your time and have a great day.